Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for another video. And today we're going to talk about the actual kits and models of the Horus Heresy, which are provided almost exclusively um, by the Forge World offshoot company from Games Workshop. Um, you know, obviously, those of you who uh, play the game know that uh, the, the entire rules and original miniature lines entirely grew uh, out as a creative side product by Forge World. So virtually all of the Horus Heresy miniatures are manufactured by Forge World. Now, um, so Forge World, they make high, they make high detail um, resin kits as opposed to plastic or metal. Uh, and this is obviously what they're, what they're all well known for. Um, and the kits are expensive, as all resin mod models are. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that Forge World are particularly more expensive than other manufacturers of like resin kits on the market. Um, so this isn't a video about uh, Forge World prices. Um, but what it is a video about is Forge World kit quality. Um, and to just give you the background from what my perspective is, so you know, I've, I've bought probably over 100 different Forge World kits um, over the last few years. Uh, in the time that I've been collecting and gaming the Horus Heresy range. So uh, I, I feel I've got a reasonable experience base to talk from. And over that time, I've encountered a number of common themes with faults uh, in Forge World kits. Uh, and I want to talk to you about those today. There's a bit of a heads up for what to expect and and things to watch out for when you buy your Forge World model. So when you get it, how to things to look for when you quality control. Um, I'm also going to discuss what I think my solutions are to those issues, because um, I think some of them can be resolved in, by yourself, uh, and where that can't be done, how to uh, deal with that with Forge World. So, but yeah, so, uh, but yeah, before we get into this, this isn't a video in any way to bash Forge World because. Uh, you know, I, I very much like what they do, their creativity and their products. Um, you know, and anyone who's ever dealt with Forge World, uh, like myself, will know that their customer service team are excellent. They are very helpful. Um, they certainly go. They've always gone out of their way to help me resolve issues. Um, so I'd, I'd give them a massive thumbs up uh, for their customer service. Uh, and likewise, the creativity of the company in terms of what they produce. Um, and what they're trying to do with the Horus Heresy range, uh, another big thumbs up. If any part of Forge World is going to get any criticism today, it will be the actual production and quality control parts of the business. So without further ado, uh, let's start to talk about what my common issues are to watch out with with the Forge World model. So there's six of these in total, and I'm going to go th through them in sequence. Um, and I'm going, to sh I'm going to illustrate them by using examples from actual Forge World kits of every single one. Um, I've tried to get as many different models to illustrate these issues as I can. Um, so I'm trying to show that these, these can affect any Forge World kit. Uh, whereas just saying, oh gosh, I've had this one particularly shocking example. Oh, well, it's actually just one bad batch. I, it's... I believe it's an issue that affects the general production process at Forge World, uh, and I'm going to illustrate that with many different examples. So, firstly, um, the first issue is air bubbles, voids, and pitting. So, um, resin kits are cast by um, in, by injector molding or mold, injecting liquid resin into a, a type of rubber polymer mold. Uh, and then I believe a vacuum chamber is used to draw the um, resin into the mould and allow it to cure. Um, if, uh, and I believe there may be some sort of technique to vibrate the bubbles out as well, if however this isn't executed properly or enough time allowed, uh, you can find that air bubbles still exist uh, in the final cast item. Uh, I'm going to show this to you, so the first part we have here this is the main weapon housing and elbow joint of the uh, Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator main weapon for the Mars Pattern Warlord Titan. And I'm going to show you an example of pitting. So pitting is basically a whole series of air bubbles occurring on the same part. And you can clearly see on the rear of the armature a series of pits. 
this one doesn't matter here, we won't see that, but we can see these two here, another one here. On the back of an elbow, there we go, you can see there's a whole series of small air bubble pits. And again, if we look down here, on the underside of the armature, again, there's more pitting. Some of this will be covered by other parts, so it's, a, it's not of consequence. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's one, one quality control issue to watch out for, which is air bubbles. I'm going to show you a photograph now of a part I, um, I used in a conversion. And this is a particularly extreme example uh, of an air bubble. So this is a Land Raider track unit. And as you can see here and here, there are some enormous air bubbles. Uh, they were several millimeters across. And indeed, this air bubble here was so large that the actual, that, uh, that part of the track actually broke off and snapped when I started to clean this uh, particular component up. So sometimes, as in the previous item, the air bubbles are cosmetic. Other times they can be structural as well. So what do you do about air bubbles? Well, the sort of pitting that I showed you on the plasma annihilator can be filled easily enough. That's not a serious uh, issue. The, the large voids, the likes of which um, cause a structural failure, if you prepare to spend the time, they can, be, they can often be rebuilt. Um, however, if it occurs across a piece of fine detail, uh, which I've, I've encountered, um, you are best off approaching Forge World for a replacement. And the straightforward way to do that is to email them, include, all, include photos of the part, a picture of your receipt, your batch number from the kit, uh, and the, the address and a description, address for your replacement parts, and a description of what your issue is. So I won't go through that again when I talk about replacement parts again. Okay, so the second uh, quality, con the second thing to watch out for with Forge World model kit quality are warped and distorted parts. I'm going to deal with this in two parts. First of the warped parts. Warped parts. This is an example of a warped part. So here we have part of a Land Raider track unit from a Land Raider armored Proteus. And you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, it is not flat. It is indeed acquired a curve. Now the reason for this is, I believe there is a, uh, there's, a, there's a sort of temperature time curing element involved in the resin setting. And if not properly cooled, when the parts are removed from the mold, they can be warped. Um, I mean, this piece is supposed to lie flat. Now, this is a very easy issue to resolve. All you need to do is immerse the part in some boiled, freshly boiled hot water. Obviously, be careful when doing that and use a spoon to fish it out so you don't burn yourself. Uh, or use a hairdryer to soften it. And then you can manipulate the part back into shape. Once you've got it into shape, you can hold it in that position while it cools down or quickly d dunk it under some cold water to lock it in position. And that works very, very well. Um, so. Uh, warped parts, a common, a common thing you'll encounter, but very easy to remedy. Okay, so then the second half of this issue is what I call distorted parts. Now we're going to return to the uh, plasma annihilator again. Fortunately, this part is copying it today. And we're going to look at around the elbow. If we look at this, here we go, that's better get the light on it. We can see that this is curved. This piece is not supposed to be curved. I viewed the original master, an original master copy of this uh, at a Forge or the Open Day, and this part is supposed to be dead straight. Uh, and likewise, on the other side, an even more extreme example. You can see there where that uh, this this part of the elbow joint has got a clear curve on it. And what's happened here is it's the model or the mould seems to have sucked in, and that may be an effect of the vacuum process, but these are supposed to be straight. So what do you do about distorted parts? These can't be fixed uh, by heating them up and repositioning them generally, because it is a permanent characteristic of a cast piece. Um, so you've got two options. Firstly, you can try rebuild using a modelling putty, or secondly, as before, Email Forge World, request replacement part on the basis it's faulty. Okay, third issue, broken and missing parts. So, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, all Forge World kits are manufactured and packed by hand. 
So there's no um, automated production process and therefore there is always a possibility that a part is missing. And I'm going to illustrate, and likewise parts can be broken, and I'm going to illustrate both of these with a single sprue um, here. And this is where both of these issues accounted in, in occurred at the same time. Um, these are part of the leg kit from the Vorax class Battle Automata from the Mechanicum Army List. You can see this, this here is a foot of the Vorax and one of the toes, just there, was broken when I received it. And it wasn't in the bag either. If it had been in the bag I could have pinned it back on it would have been fine. But it had just gone missing. So that was that's not recoverable um, unless you're prepared to spend hours recrafting the part out of a milliput or green stuff or equivalent putty. Uh, and likewise here, the upper leg was completely missing. So this was a, a very straightforward answer to the to broken or missing parts. It's an email to a forge world, request a replacement. The fourth issue I'm going to talk about are broken moulds. So this is where um, a piece has been cast, and when it was cast, part of the mould has broken. The, the, as I say, the, the moulds are made of some sort of rubber compound, uh, and they, are, they only last a certain amount of time, and they will start to fail. If a broken mould is then used to recast a new piece, the missing piece of mould will then obviously create a cavity in the part, which will be then cast in the resin. And here we have an excellent example of this issue in another section of Land Raider track. So let's start with the good side. So here we can see the inside of the Land Raider track unit, very nice. You know, clear, sharp detail there. If we then rotate this piece round, we can see the effects of a broken mould that was used to cast this piece with all this detritus and residue gunk that's been cast into the inside of a track unit. Look at that from above so you can see both sides. So the severity of this will depend on what you're dealing with. This part, because of where it sits on the Land Raid model, could be cleaned up relatively easily and hidden from view. Um, however, I have had this occur on faces and other p points of fine detail. Um, if that happens, it's, that old, add it, it's the old solution, contact and ask for a replacement part. Okay, number five is one of the most common issues I have for requesting a replacement part, and that is due to mould slippage. Now, um, forge wall kits are, are made out of two, I think they're generally two part moulds, there may be more, I, I'm not sure. Um, and these moulds need to be held in alignment for the casting process and while the resin cures. If they're misaligned um, when the casting takes place, you will create a uh, a mismatch on the mould which will carry through into the cast part. And I have two examples to show this. Firstly, uh, there's a pair of last cannons here from a, a Land Raider, a Horus Heresy Land Raider, Proteus, and if we look on the underside we can see the clear and unmistakable evidence of a mould slip occurred that's occurred, and that's actually caused a very noticeable distortion to the detail on this part. And the offset there is indeed probably around half a millimetre in places. In terms of how to fix these, depending how, how handy you are with a craft knife, sometimes they are recoverable where the offset hasn't been too great and they, the part can be trimmed and put back to shape. Um, and perhaps use of a little filler as well. However, in the instance of this part, uh, this was replaced because it was clearly not uh, of a state where it could be recovered. Uh, and another example of mould slippage, uh, this time we're looking at an infantry figure. This is a Solar Auxilia LAS Rifle Trooper. Uh, and if we look at his legs, we can see here that a mould slip has occurred. And also here that, the mold, that a mould slip has occurred. Yeah, these caused a uh, some quite significant distortions to the detail and beyond what is easily recoverable to get back to the original quality of the kit cast, of what the kit is supposed to be like. So that's mould slippage. To, um, 
And then finally, incorrectly sized parts. Now this is perhaps one of the most difficult um, issues to remedy. Uh, and sometimes it's actually an intractable problem that you'll have to use your ingenuity to solve. I'm going to show you three example, three separate examples of this. Okay, the first one, uh, we're going to look at uh, some Titan, some Warlord Titan main weaponry. And here we have an assembled um, Bellicosa pattern volcano cannon. Now, the, the distorted, if we look at the barrel, so here we see the barrel of the gun, well, cannon, we should say, and the main barrel here has a pair of barrel supports that run underneath it. I love the detailing on these, by the way. If we move to look at the actual muzzle assembly and the nozzle, and look at where these these two barrel supports are supposed to connect into the bait, these two prongs on the underside of the muzzle, you can see how there's two sort of thinner sections there. The reason those are there is because I had to I had to create an extension to the end of these two parts because they simply didn't fit. The point at which the thicker section ends is where they stopped and there was a gap between those and the actual end of the muzzle. So these parts were out, out of size to this plus this. So in this instance, because I'd built most of this already and I only found it at a very late stage of assembly and the fact it's relatively minor, uh, I, create, I built two spaces, pinned it all together and you know, it, it's just created a bit of an individual look. But that would have certainly been worthy of replacement as well. Second example of um, incorrectly sized parts, we're going to look at a Malkador class super heavy tank. So here is my Malkador. Um, this is part of the Solar Auxilia. As you can see, there's a Solar Auxilia guy up on top of the multi laser. Now, the outsized part was the roof of the turret citadel. The issue was that this part was about one millimeter too big for the corresponding area of hull. And so there was a clear overlap and some of the detail didn't align properly. Um, what I did to fix this, um, although it's quite a noticeable um, fault, I was able to carefully trim from each corner, an amount of material off the top. Use some filler, as you can see there, there's some milliput filling, to basically realign it. And it just about worked. I think it's it's reasonably, I got a reasonably acceptable result there. Um, there was one area where I couldn't deal with the issue, the uh, misalignment, and this very clearly shows it. Uh, if we look at the resin cable that runs at the side of a turret, you can see that it doesn't meet the, the connector point at the top. Uh, so what I did is I used a piece of metal of steel wire to put an extra tube in there to, per, to create the appearance of a double connector and hide the mismatch. Um, so yeah, so that was a, an example of a part that was simply too big for the recipient part, or perhaps the recipient part was too small for this. Who knows? Final example of incorrect sized parts we're going to look at the uh, Land Raider Armoured Proteus. So this is a part built at the moment. This is uh, going to be part of my Iron Hand, Iron Hand Legion. Uh, and the issue here is with the tracks in relation to the track units. So track units, tracks. What's the problem? The problem is the tracks are too big for the track units. Let me show you why. You see there are large gaps or noticeable gaps at the front and rear. Uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the instructions for this model uh, and all the photos on the Forge World website, these uh, are supposed to fit snugly. The tracks against the w road wheels, uh, and it's particularly noticeable here where there's a noticeable gap. Now, I and let's have a look at the other side. This is even more noticeable. This is worse and. Despite very careful spacing, there's actually, you can see, I ended up with a slight gap here. That was after a, a complete new set of parts to see if it, uh, to try remedy the issue, and the replacements I was sent by Forgeworld, unfortunately, were just as bad. 
Uh, having looked at every single example of this tank at the Warhammer World Display Exhibition Hall, they're all the same bar one. So there just seems to be some intractable issue there with their moulds and it's in potential need of a redesign. So yeah, that's that's quite a the so I was at the point of almost getting this refunded. However, you know, the only way to get a Landraid Rama Protus is to buy a forge old one, and there's no other way of getting one. So I used a whole load of milliput uh, and careful positioning and packing and heating up of the parts to try space the gap as best I could around the entire tank, uh, around the entire track unit even, um, to get a solution. And in the end, I suppose it's not bad. I can live with it just. So there you go. Six common quality control issues uh, and faults to watch out for when you buy forge or kits and my ideas about how to put those right and repair them. As I said, um, you know, this isn't a video to criticize Forge World, it's just to give you guys as people who might be interested in buying or do buy those kits, uh, think something to think about to put right any issues you do encounter, either yourself uh, or by approaching Forge World for a replacement themselves. So, um, have you had issues with Forge World models? Um, how how many have you had? How frequently? Um, have you found Forge World uh, as helpful as I've always found them when you've asked them to put those issues right? I'll be very interested here. Please leave your views in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.